Good morning, good night, according to when you're watching this. Everybody here live, we know that it's in the evening, uh, and I am so thankful for a special service we're going to have on a Wednesday night. Uh, this is going to be a baptismal service, and what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what baptism is. Uh, I'm going to tell you a story about a boy named Weston and what he's told me. So uh, in this process, what we're going to do, it's so good to see uh, some of Weston's who are all these people? They family? They friends? Friends? Yep. Is your friend, is that your friend in the front row? No, if that's your mom? Yep, yep. So Weston's little brother said he's getting baptized. I'm not. So tonight what we're going to do is I'm going to play a song, uh, and then what we're going to do is take this moment for us just to worship God and then realize what baptism uh, is all about. And then we're going to baptize Weston tonight. So uh, if we could, let us just take this moment to worship God Thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness, wash and pray, find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, and all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed. White as Lord, now indeed I find Thy power in Thine alone Came and changed the leper spots And it melt the heart of stone Jesus paid it all, and all to him my own. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. And when before the throne, Died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat. Oh, Jesus paid it all, and all to him my own. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as Sin 
had left the crimson stain He washed it white as snow And He washed it white as snow When we think about uh, the cross of Christ and we think about what He did for us, uh, oftentimes people on the outside of churches, they look at baptism and they wonder, uh, what is all this stuff? What does it mean? What is it about? Uh, so we take a moment to talk about baptism and what it is and what we do with this and why we do it. Uh, the other day, I would say it was about two weeks ago, I got a FaceTime call from Weston, and Weston said, I asked Jesus in my heart, and I went, because that's what, you know, bald-headed guys do. I was so excited for him, and I said, well, Weston, did he come in? And he goes, nope. And well... We got to make sure that dude got in there. So he's in there, isn't he, Weston? He came to live inside your heart, so you're going to be baptized. Uh, I read out of Psalm chapter uh, 18 where it reads, I love you, Lord. You are my strength. It goes on in verse 2 and says, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield the power that saves me, and my place of safety. See, for us tonight, as we're online, and, and some of Weston's family has come tonight for this baptism, we realize that in life, life is so hard. And we live in uncertain times, very much so. Our rock and our salvation, the reason why we're able to make it through the circumstances and the situations of our life, is based solely upon God and we use that through the name of Jesus Christ for us today in this life so what does that look like for baptism when I think about it Titus chapter 3 reads this but when God our Savior revealed his kindness and love he saved us not because of the righteous things we have done be because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. Now, if he doesn't come back, we're going to have to baptize one of you guys. So you better make sure he comes back. But I think about this and I think about the idea of being washed. And we, we understand as we get older, we see the things we've done as adults. We understand what other adults do. We understand how in this world we need a Savior. And you look and Weston is how old? 60? How old is West? Six. Yeah. Yeah. And you think, well, what has a child done? Well, what we realize is, is that every single one of us are in need of a Savior. And it doesn't matter. and We can never be good enough on our own to make something change about that. We need God. And even Weston, at the age of six, needs this. Acts chapter 2, verse 41 reads this. Those who believe that what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. So all I need is about 2,999 more people to show up. I got a lot of baptisms in me to go, right? Well, it's probably not going to happen. And if it did, we would be really like having some serious capacity issues at that point. But for us tonight, I want you to think that this continues on. So what, what Weston is doing and what we do with baptism is very important. It's something that's been done for, for many years, and Jesus comes on the scene, and when Jesus comes on the scene, you think, well, he is perfect. He knew no sin. He, he wasn't sin. He had no sin in him. And in Matthew chapter 3, verse 13, it reads this, Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. And it is in this moment that we realize that Jesus has given us an example. 
For many of us, we don't get baptized and we don't do the things that God tells us to do. And Jesus says, wait a minute, I'm fulfilling what God wants. I think about that for my own son, Mitchell. I tried to get him to come tonight, Weston, so Mitchell would be baptized. Mitchell's never been baptized. He's, he's scared to get up there, right? So I tell him, I'm like, hey, Weston's going to be baptized. He goes, it's Wednesday. I go, I know, it's weird, isn't it, that we're going to do a baptism on Wednesday? I mean, it's biblical to only be baptized on Sunday, isn't it? And I'm like, okay, that's not true. It's not, it's no, it's no day, it, the day that you get saved, let's go get baptized. And I was like, yes, Mitchell, Wednesday. And he goes, Weston? And I said, yes, you know Weston. He goes, yes. I said, you want to get baptized? And he started talking about the Power Rangers. And I said, Mitchell, now I know this is the, this insight to a preacher's house. I said, Mitchell... Power Rangers get baptized too, you know. He looked me square in the face, and he says, well, guess what, Dad? I said, what? He says, I'm not a Power Ranger. And he went and got in bed. It was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He was taking a nap when we left. And I'm like, okay, that is not going to happen yet. But Jesus gave us an example. He is perfection, Jesus and he says, this is what God desires for us. So maybe you're watching right now and you see Weston and, and Weston's not, you, you're a little nervous about water, aren't you? Yeah, but, but we realize that in and through our nervousness, we have an example in Jesus Christ. It goes on and it says, after his baptism, as Jesus came out of the water, the heavens were opened and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. I want you to know that the heavenly father, he sees what's getting ready to take place in this very moment. He loves you and he cares about you. And what we see in the example of Jesus Christ, we do this for us that we continue forward with Weston. Jesus came and told his disciples in chapter 28, Verse 18, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. This is at the end of his ministry. And therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So in this moment, what you're going to hear me say in a little while when we're up there, I want to raise my hand and I'm going to say because of your confession and profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Weston, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is a command that Jesus gives us. See, we don't do it just because we think it's great. We do it because Jesus gave us the example, and then Jesus gives us the command to. But baptism is not the end of the road on this. Baptism is just part of the next step because it says teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you and behold I am with you always even to the end of the age and in this moment as we see this verse and we see this understanding you go Weston six years old. And I go, yep, and it doesn't really matter to me what age anyone is. What matters is, do they accept Jesus into their heart? Because the very next verse after the command is, now teach them. So for your family that's sitting here, Weston, for our family that's online right now, for the church family that is online and watching this, it is our task, it is our job to teach you now to continue on. I'm 49 years old, and every day I get up and I read something in the Bible, and I go, I didn't know it was in there. And I've read the Bible from beginning to end, and from end to beginning. I've went all over the Bible, and you go, there's still something new. So we do this to say, I want to continue growing and learning. So our task in this moment, when we get ready to baptize him, it's not the end. It's just the beginning so I read that verse and say that God has given us a special command. And for some here and some online right now, you may be wondering, have I sinned? Have I done something? What did Weston do wrong? Well, we're all in need of a savior for every single boy, every single girl, every single man and every single woman. They have sinned and they fall short of God's glorious standard. But there's a free gift that God gives us. It's not something that we can work out because the penalty of our sin is death. 
And ultimately, God doesn't want anyone to perish, no one to go uh, and find punishment. He wants to redeem everyone. See, the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And in chapter 6, uh, verse 23, it reads this, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So for you today, maybe you're sitting here and maybe you're watching online and you say, I've never asked Jesus into my heart. It's simple. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. For us tonight, as I think about it and I look to Weston and I ask him the question, if you ask Jesus into your heart, did he come in? Yes, he did. That was a question almost back to me. And you're like, what? what?" Yeah. We just continue to grow and we continue to learn. And I realize that in this moment, somebody is going to watch this and you're just going to be scrolling by and you're going to wonder what baptism is all about. We follow the example of Jesus Christ. We follow his command. And then we realize life just starts when we accept Jesus into our life and we continue to move and grow. And all you have to do is ask Jesus to come into your heart because ultimately there is no father greater than our good father in heaven. And we find that within scripture that it's important to realize what what baptism does. And in 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 21 it reads, "...and that water is a picture of baptism." which now saves you not by removing dirt from your body, but as a response to God from a clean conscience. It is effective because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So as, as General Baptist, we, we understand that when you get baptized, that we immerse. That's what baptism means, to immerse into the water. And, and it's like, like your old life is, is being buried and your new life in Jesus Christ is being renewed and started. So I'm going to play a song and my hope is, is for you that are watching online that maybe you take this moment to prepare yourself to give a comment for Weston because we can't all be here to be able to high five him and stuff. And I just want you to send some likes, some loves on there, something that when this happens, we can come back and and his mom and dad can say, look at all these people who care about you, Weston. And then for you guys here, when we baptize, I'm probably going to hoop and holler a little bit. Is that okay? Weston yeah because I'm going to be excited so we're going to play this song and then I'm going to ask Weston and and you two to to work your way up there and then when the song's over with go ahead and have him sitting down in there and you two in view and then I'm going to shine this thing up in here closer uh, to make that happen Uh, Lord I thank you for this opportunity that we have and I thank you for a Wednesday night that that takes us out of our normal Bible study but Lord we've more than for sure, shown biblical reason for why we do this. And Lord, maybe there's someone else watching tonight who's not been baptized, and maybe they didn't even, haven't even accepted Jesus Christ into their life. Lord, I ask that in this moment that they would just hear the words that have been spoken, and that, Lord, they would find themselves worshiping after you and longing after you, for, Lord, we are totally separated from you because of sin in this world. And Lord, you make us right in your sight by accepting you and your forgiveness. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, I seem many searching for
So, you see a big, really close head shot right there, but what's in the background back there? Do you see yourself on there, Weston? Can you see yourself right there? Yeah. Yeah? So, kind of. So, what are we getting ready to do? What are we getting ready to do? You going to get baptized? Yeah. Have you asked Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Yes. Who's standing up with you for this? Dad and granddad, do you like them? Yeah. Do you love them? Yeah. Are they godly men? Yeah. Are they godly men? Do they love God? Yeah. Yes, yes. Mom back here, you can feel the oxygen leave out like, oh, don't leave open any questions for him like that. That's tough. So what I'm getting ready to do, Weston, is I'm getting ready to come up there and we're going to baptize you, okay? So you guys just hang on just for a moment.
So, let me turn this one on. Uh, Weston still changing. Oh, there's Weston. Uh, Weston, congratulations to you, my friend. Uh, I'm super excited for you. Uh, I'm seeing hand claps there. I see that Mitchell said, you did it! Now it's your turn, Mitchell. Now it's your turn. Next Wednesday night, buddy, you will do the same thing if you want to. Virgi Miss Virginia says, love you, Weston. Yeah. I mean, there's let's go, uh, Weston, proud of you, Weston. I want you to know that we're all proud of you, okay? And I want you to know through the circumstances and the situations of life, it's going to be tough. It has been tough. It's going to continue to be tough. But I promise you this, God is still on his throne. God still loves you. And no matter what this world throws our way, it will never change that fact. May God bless you. May God keep you. And may you find rest and comfort. And may you guys go and find joy tonight, seeing Weston being baptized tonight. I will talk to you guys uh, whenever I see you again.